Born during the Great Depression on December 30, 1936 in St. Louis, Missouri to Everett Ray Harrison and Mildred Bay Harrison, Jim Harrison learned how to survive at a young age. Due to his father being a carpenter during World War II, the family found themselves constantly moving. At the age of seven, the family moved to California where young Jim got his first taste of the martial arts after watching two Japanese kids demonstrate judo. Mesmerized by their demonstration, this event would change Jim's life forever. After returning to the St. Louis area, Jim attended several different schools throughout Missouri. At each new location, he searched for a place to learn judo. By the age of 17, Jim had successfully found a martial arts dojo to which to learn this relatively new and intriguing art. Without a doubt, Jim Harrison's influence and impact on the martial arts world was immeasurable over his 66-year involvement. Although not known by many young practitioners, ask any karate veteran who they would least like to face on the street, and they would probably say Jim Harrison. Even Bruce Lee was once quoted as saying, I fear no man, but Jim Harrison and Mike Stone are the last two men that I would wish to meet in any alley fight. Jim Harrison's fighting style is not flamboyant or spectacular, it's just simple and deadly. He's one of the most dangerous men in the world. Harrison's formal martial arts training started with judo in 1954. As a result of his training in St. Louis under Bob Kurth, a former World War II Navy commando, Harrison earned his first black belt in judo and became a three-time regional AAU judo champion. Many years later, at the age of 62, Harrison won the National Masters Judo Championships held in Spokane, Washington, and placed third in the World Masters Championship held in Toronto, Canada. In addition to rugged sport competition, Kurth also taught Harrison basic striking, self-defense, and how to read body language while bouncing at the local bars and clubs. According to Harrison, his training under Kurth was priceless and laid the foundation for the future martial arts icon he would later become. In the late 1950s, Harrison also began training in karate. After studying under several different instructors and styles, he earned his karate black belt in Shorin Ryu under Jim Wax in 1964. In addition to Shorin Ryu, he also earned black belts in Shotokan, Goju Ryu, Kyoku Shin, and Mudukwan. Blending his different styles of karate together, he was one of the first Americans to form their own eclectic style known as Bushidokan Karate. Bushidokan quickly became well known around the world for its emphasis on practical and effective street self-defense, hard contact sparring, and producing champions. In 1964, Harrison moved from St. Louis to Kansas City, where he opened his first Bushidokan dojo. A pioneer of the 1960s blood and guts era of American karate, he went on to win championship titles at some of the most prestigious tournaments of the time including three times the U.S. Karate Championship and three times the All-American Grand Championship. His bare-knuckle karate battles against competitors such as Roger Carpenter, Fred Wren, Ed Daniel, David Moon, and Joe Lewis are now a matter of legend. Virtually every tournament which Harrison made it to the finals were described as bloody due to Harrison's love for full contact. One such event was the 1969 Gulf Coast Karate Championship, which became known as Bloody Galveston. At that event, Harrison's war with 6'6", 270-pound Ed Daniel resulted in the winner being determined by who had received the fewest number of stitches later that night in the hospital. Jim Harrison won. In addition to judo and karate, Harrison became a major force in the American kickboxing and full-contact karate scene throughout the 1970s and 80s. In 1970, Harrison coached Joe Lewis when he knocked out Greg Baines to win the first ever kickboxing match held in the United States. Later that year, Harrison made martial arts history by becoming the first U.S. light heavyweight kickboxing champion by defeating Victor Moore in Dallas, Texas. A hard-fought match, Harrison even received staples above his eye between rounds before coming back to knock Moore out. In 1974, Harrison served as the co-chief referee for the Professional Karate Association's World Championships held at the Los Angeles Sports Arena. Televised on ABC's Wide World of Sports and attracting Hollywood celebrities such as Tali Savalas and George Pippard, the nation watched as Harrison refereed the title matches that crowned Joe Lewis, Bill Wallace, and Jeff Smith 
world champions, and superstars. In 1974, Harrison was selected to coach and train the U.S. professional karate kickboxing team consisting of Howard Jackson, Bill Wallace, Jeff Smith, Jim Buden, and Joe Lewis. Under his guidance, the U.S. team went undefeated in 57 matches and defeated the European champions by an overwhelming spread of 25-0 in Berlin. Harrison also coached the U.S. team in 1975 and 76 when they were equally successful on the European tours. Serving as Bill Superfoot Wallace's personal coach and trainer, Harrison helped Wallace defeat several opponents, such as Blinky Rodriguez and Daniel Roche. As Wallace once said, when I decided to become a full contact fighter, I knew that I needed a fighter to teach and coach me. I chose Jim Harrison. He inspires you. You believe in him. He makes you believe in yourself. In the mid-1970s, Harrison's Kansas City Bushido Khan Dojos had four U.S. kickboxing champions. Jeff Payne, the number four PKA World Rated Lightweight. Ray Patton, the number six PKA World Rated Lightweight. Mark Payne, the number four PKA World Rated Middleweight. And Steve Mackey, the number two PKA World Rated Middleweight and number three PKA World Rated Light Heavyweight. Besides being a phenomenal instructor, coach, referee, and competitor, Harrison was also an early martial arts promoter. His first major promotion was when he and Jim Lindell hosted the 1965 Korean Yudo Federation Central Division Championship and helped sponsor a nationwide tour of the Korean National Yudo Team. In 1967, 68, and 69, he organized the United States Karate Association Grand Nationals. At the time, this event was considered to be one of the most prestigious karate tournaments in the United States. In 1968, Harrison promoted the first World Professional Karate Championships. Originally designed to serve as a pilot TV show for professional karate competition, the event included well-known fighters Joe Lewis, Bob Wall, Skipper Mullins, Pat Burleson, David Moon, and Fred Wren, along with referees Bob Trias, Alan Steen, and Lou Angel. At the end of the event, Harrison paid the winner, Joe Lewis, $1 for his efforts. Over the years, many of Harrison's Bushido Khan students went on to become Judo, Karate, Kickboxing, and MMA champions. Judo champions include greats such as Jim Lindell, Parker Shelton, Ike Slaughter, Harry Parker, and Sean Harrison. Karate champions include Jay Garrett, who was a Trios International Society member, Ned Day, Jim Cox, George Woy, Tom Whiteman, Mark Payne, Chuck Northcott, Joe Smedley, Larry Page, Steve Mackey, Jeff Payne, Janet Walgren, Ed Bixby, Bob Boggs, Matt David, and George Clark. Three Bushido Khan students became world champions, Steve Mackey in shootboxing, Bob Thunder Thurman in kickboxing, and Josh Barnett in MMA. One of Harrison's most proud achievements was his instruction of elite military and law enforcement units, such as SWAT, SEALs, Delta, and Rangers. His two highest ranking black belts, Jim Lindell and Colonel Ike Slaughter, are well known throughout those communities. Harrison himself served in the early 1960s on a special violence squad designed to clean up violent crimes in St. Louis. In addition, during the Vietnam era, he was part of a mercenary team that participated in several search and destroy operations throughout Southeast Asia. Throughout the decades, Harrison received many awards and accolades. In 1988, he was inducted, alongside his good friend and movie star Chuck Norris, into the Karate Hall of Fame in Ohio. In 2002, Harrison, along with Evander Holyfield, the former heavyweight boxing champion, Wesley Snipes, martial arts film star, Bernard Carrick, former NYPD commissioner, and John Corcoran, martial arts historian, were inducted into the Battle of Atlanta's Centurion Club. In 2009, he was named Black Belt Magazine Self-Defense Instructor of the Year. 
In 2019, he was inducted into the American Karate Black Belt Association, AKBBA, Hall of Fame. In 1978, Harrison moved to Missoula, Montana in order to pursue his love for extreme sports and expand the Bushido Khan style to the northwestern United States. While operating his personal dojos, Samurai Martial Arts Training Center, and Sakura Warrior Arts, he competed and participated in various outdoor activities, such as alpine and Nordic skiing, skin and scuba diving, rock climbing and rappelling, telemark skiing, skydiving, parachuting, paraskiing, bow hunting, whitewater kayaking, and both regular and snow camping. His emphasis on being able to survive not only in a street fight, but also in the wilderness made him a true survivalist. In 2017, Harrison created the Bushido Khan Yudansha Kai organization in order to develop and preserve the legacy, standards, tradition, and reputation of his Bushido Khan martial arts style. The board of directors, consisting of Tor Harrison, Travis Boggs, Steve Kinser, Bob Thurman, and Luke Joven, are dedicated to carrying on the Jim Harrison legacy. On a more personal level, it was the friendships that Harrison developed over the years that he cherished the most. Most of his closest friends were the people that he had fought and shed blood with on the mats many years ago. His family, most notably his children, meant the most to him. Many of them achieved black belts in both judo and karate and became reputable martial artists in their own right. His 11 children, including Dirk, Sean, Lance, Aaron, Chris, Kelly, Cody, Valkyrie, Tanya, Tor, and Ty all made him extremely proud. An avid reader, author, outdoorsman, pilot, skier, kayaker, gardener, and carpenter, his interest and knowledge were so wide-ranging that he was truly a Renaissance man, in addition to being the closest thing to a modern samurai, or as he would say, a ronin. <laughs>